Hi, this is me, it's Queen Alcet Haru, and thank you for joining me for another exciting edition of Ask an Aquarius. So if you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. So somebody asked me if I have any advice for brand new tarot and oracle card readers, and definitely I do. Um, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a whole lot, as a matter of fact, but I'm going to give you three right now. My top three tips for a person who is getting into tarot and oracle cards. One of the things people always say to me is, you're so accurate. Um, you, you do the cards so well. How do you know the cards so well? Well, this is how. It's three things. The first one is I'm clairvoyant. And you need to be clairvoyant to do readings, to do divination. If you're not clairvoyant, you're not going to get any success with the cards. It's going to look like gibberish to you, okay? So the first thing is, is do you have any ability? Everybody cannot read cards. Reading cards is divination. Not everyone has that gift. Some people have other gifts. Some people are kitchen witches. Some people are... Um, Oh my God, there's so many different things you can be. Gifted at candle magic, gifted at crystals, gifted at all kinds of things. But everybody's not gifted at the same thing. Some people are gifted mediums, but they're, everybody's not gifted with everything. So if you're not clairvoyant, and clairvoyant means clear seeing, then you're not going to be able to get the right cards and the right answers from the cards. So that's the first thing is do you have the ability OK, and how do you know if you have the ability? You'll know that you're clairvoyant because you see clear seeing. You see things. You see things in your dreams. You see things in visions. You may even see spirits and angels and things along those lines. But you can see you have what we call a right here, your third eye. You have an open third eye. You have the gift of sight. Now, many of us that have the gift of sight have to train ourselves we have to open our eye because your eye usually isn't really open um, might be a little bit open and you have to do things to enhance that so what we do to enhance it is meditation okay so first things first you have to have some kind of ability you have to open up your third eye you have to um open up to that part of yourself that clairvoyant part of yourself so that's number one, opening up, having that, having clairvoyance is number one, and then working it, opening it, using your tool, okay? Number two, you must follow your gut. You have to trust your intuition. When you're doing cards, a lot of things happen. One of the things is that your, the people that you're reading, they lie to you sometimes. Sometimes you'll say something and they'll say, huh, and act like they don't know what you're talking about. One time... I was reading a woman. This is when I first started reading and I didn't know any better. And I saw that there was a young man in her life who was being very mean to her. And quite frankly, looked very abusive. So I said to her, uh, who is this young man? And she said, oh, there's no young man. I don't know what you're talking about. So I felt very shut down because I was like, well, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I, don't, I just started reading, so I don't know. And so I, I just ended the reading. <laughs> I ended it right there. Like, oh, I guess I'm not connecting with you. Sorry. And I ended the reading. So later on, the same day, one of her friends was like, you were talking about her grandson. Her grandson has been stealing her money. Her grandson has been staying with her and taking advantage of her. But she didn't want to admit that to you. This was a public reading. So other people were in this chat room with us. And I was like, oh, and that's when I realized that when you're reading, you have to go with your gut. If the person tells you you're right or wrong, that is of no consequence. Go with your gut because sometimes people lie and sometimes things are going on that they don't know about. There was a, t a one time when I was talking to a woman and I told her that her husband had a child and she told me her husband could not have kids, that he was... Um, sterile he could not have any children and i was like okay but i see a baby so i left it alone i told her about it and left it alone come to find out her husband did have a baby with someone else 
and she had never she never knew about it. So that's why when it came up in the card, she had no idea what I was talking about. She found out years later and then ran into me and told me about it. And I was like, I knew it. I saw the baby. <laughs> I see the baby in the car. So there's a baby somewhere. Okay. So you have to trust your own intuition regardless of what anybody else says to you. You have to trust yourself. If your gut says, say this, then say it. One time I was doing a reading for a really good friend of mine. And I got to the last card. It was a health card. This was a spread that did uh, a number of different things. And the last thing it did was your health. So I got the card and I stopped cold. And she was like, what's wrong? And I was just cold. I didn't want to say what I saw. And she was like, what is it? And I was like, it says that you're going to die. And she was like, that's what the doctor said. And I was like, oh my God. Come to find out. She had just went to the doctor and the doctor told her that if she didn't change her ways, she wasn't going to be with us much longer. She changed and she's still with us. <laughs> so the doctor earlier had just told her what I saw in the cards, but she didn't tell me. So I didn't even know about it, you know? So it freaked me out and I didn't want to say anything, but because I did say something, she realized that what the doctor said was true and she behaved accordingly and this is like 10 years later and she's fine so you have to trust your intuition it's really important when you're doing readings and the third thing the last thing I'm going to say the most these are the top three you have to know the cards I know the cards in the upright I know the cards in the reverse I know every symbol that's on the card and what it historically ties to I know the court cards. I know the major arcana. I know the history of tarot. Um, the all of the above. You have to know those cards. You got to study the cards. You got to study interpretations. You got to study what the cards mean when they come up together. Now, mind you, the things I'm talking about right now are mostly about tarot specifically. But whatever system you're using, tarot, oracle, whatever, whatever system you're using, you have to know the cards. You got to know them cards like homework. And that's why so many people fail at reading cards accurately because they don't know what they mean. You have to know what the cards mean. And if you don't know precisely like I do every symbol, every movement of the cards, you have to have a pretty good gist of their interpretations. And then remember when they come together in threes or fours, it could mean something different based on the blend of cards. So you have to know what the combinations mean. You got to know those cards. You know, and for tarot, I recommend buying the original tarot deck um, in 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 Europe. They created the Rider Waite Smith deck. This deck is recognized as the most modern tarot deck, our first tarot deck before that deck. There were decks, there were other divination systems, but this is the modern version that we all still use today. Some people say tarot goes all the way back to ancient Kemet. So tarot is not a brand new thing. So when this modern deck came out, divination and cards and that kind of thing had been around for a long time. But this is the first system in our modern times. So it's like the, you know, it's the original, it's the one we all go back to. So I would suggest using the Rider Waite Smith. After we do this video, I'll put a link to it underneath this video. I suggest learning with that one, even though it's not the most beautiful deck, there are some more pretty decks. I always teach on this one. When I teach a tarot class, I teach on this deck because it is the first one. And if you can read that one, you can read any of the other decks, except for the ones that are Toth based, which is a whole different video. Okay. Um, Toth is a different deck that came along much later. And it changed the system just a little bit. So the bottom line is if you learn the first system, you'll be able to get the top system. You'll be able to read any deck. So that's what I recommend. I recommend that you get that deck and you learn them backwards and forwards. And you practice. 
It's not enough to just do readings, you know, to, to just read interpretations. You have to do readings on yourself to see how their interpretations fit into your life. So every day, do a reading on yourself. Do a simple three-card spread. Mind, body, spirit. A.M., noon, P.M. <laughs> you know, something very simple. Three cards. And write down the card. Write down the interpretation. And write down how it played out in your life that day. So you can begin to journal and see how the cards play out in your life. Okay? One of the things that happened when I first started, I read cards. I read myself only for a long time. Then I started to read one friend who let me guinea pig on her. And then I started to go to chat rooms and read people in the chat rooms. So for free, you know, I just want to practice. And I practiced and practiced. I practiced for like three or four years before I even read somebody for pay. <laughs> the first time before that, I just read for free and I just wanted to learn. I wanted to be great at it before I started trying to charge people. Some people, I think they come into tarot because it looks like a good way to make money. But really, even though they always tell us that we we should state because of legalities that tarot is for um, entertainment purposes only. Tarot is really spiritual in its intent. It really plays with your spiritual energy. It draws from your emotional energy. So if you're talking to somebody, they're not really going to be taking it as entertainment. So if you tell them something and you're irresponsible or you're wrong about what you said, they're going to be looking at you. So you want to be as accurate as possible. At least 80% of the time, you should be accurate before it becomes something that you decide to take on as a profession. So remember, it's not a side hustle. It's something that's very serious. It's a calling. Okay? So for those of you who do want to take on readings and doing readings, please remember these three tips. You must be clairvoyant. You must know your intuition and trust it. And you got to know the cards. Okay? See you later.